So today I want to take a look at a ship I loved playing back when I grinded through it. Uh, the Pan-Asian DD line has been in the game for a while, and I honestly don't play these ships very much. Uh, mainly because the Yu Yang got absolutely clapped out by massive nerfs. Uh, that's happened, That's that was a while ago, but I just don't play the line anymore. Just simply because uh, I think of that ship being bad and then I don't play it. But the Gajamada, or however you pronounce it, is an incredible destroyer. This thing is awesome. And I don't know why, I just felt like playing it as a... Uh, as a random thing on my stream, and it doesn't have the most health, but I mean, at tier 7, it's not bad. But the main thing is we don't really want to take a ton of gunfights unless we have some team support, and that's what we have here. You can see that this is a very common tactic I'll use in destroyers, is trying to get a just enemy DD to shoot at me, and then when I know my team is around to spot him after that enemy DD shoots, I'll smoke up so I can start shooting at him while I'm dark and he is lit. So that's a pretty uh, simple tactic you can use um, if you know that the enemy destroyer is going to be spotted by your friendly destroyer or cruiser behind you, something like that. Now, the interesting thing about this class is, or this line, is the deep water torpedoes. They don't hit destroyers at all. They just pass right under the ship, but for that downside, you get the incredible upside of really hard-hitting torps that are basically impossible to dodge. <laughs> They're so stealthy. And on this ship in particular, I, I find myself hitting a ton of torpedoes with these deep waters. And there you go, two torp hits on, uh, on the uh, cruiser in smoke there. I think it's the, uh, I think it's the Huang Hei or whatever it's called. Yeah, there it is. And he's basically dead, <laughs> two torp hits. Uh, this thing is awesome, and of course the gun power is pretty solid as well. They they don't have the best reload, but their fire chance and their alpha damage is actually pretty high for HE sh shells, so you have a reasonable DPM. And the best part is, you'll see later on, but the uh, rear turret angles, um, so when you're pushing into someone, the turret angles are insane. So you don't have to give very much broadside at all to get all your guns off. Obviously, kiting away, you can see how bad the gun arcs are, but... I like playing mid-tier destroyers because you can be so aggressive in them. Especially this one, because the concealment is so amazing. It's like 6.2 or something like that. Whereas Mahan is stuck, um, I think, in the high sixes, if you go a full conceal build on a Mahan, something like that. Uh, usually, in, in the past, tier 7 destroyers have had poor concealment because they don't get access to the... Uh, concealment upgrade module, which you get at tier 8. So traditionally it's been poor detection, but this thing for whatever reason just gets great detection. Um, and now that we have dealt with the enemy DD, kind of forced him off, well, there's a battleship pushed up on an island and there's nowhere he can go, so you know what that means. <laughs> that means we just get to YOLO him. And I really should have only launched one rack. I had forgotten how powerful these torps are. Um, but one rack is actually more than enough to kill him here. <laughs> All we needed was three torpits. So, yeah, <laughs> for a devastating strike because this this ship is just that powerful with torpedoes. Obviously, they're limited to eight kilometers of range, but that's still pretty solid at tier seven. Um, you'll often see ships pushing into you at those ranges. Now, here's one of the best parts about the entire Pan Asian line is the smoke screens. You get a lot of them. Not quite as much as the British line, but they last far longer than the British line. You can see I've got uh, around a minute and five seconds on the last smoke puff. So you're getting in that minute 20 second of time in a smoke screen. And I found that to be pretty much perfect with this line. Um, gearing smokes, well, amazing. The American smokes are amazing for those times when people just sit within your gun range and you can farm for two minutes. Uh, that's not usually the case, I've found, is it's really, really, really difficult to find scenarios where you're able to use the entire smokescreen of an American destroyer. And the downside of that, obviously, is you end up leaving your smoke, and then your smoke is on cooldown for a longer period of time. As you can see, the difference between my smoke cooldown and my 
um, timer left on the smoke is not actually that long. It's somewhere in the neighborhood of like 20 seconds, 25 seconds, something like that. And that's not very long at all. So you can just constantly be popping these smokes in advantageous positions for yourself to farm out damage. And with the good guns, uh, reasonably good guns with decent fire chance and alpha damage, you can farm out a lot of damage very quickly. As you can see, 106,000 damage from a tier 7 destroyer in the first couple minutes of a game. Um, well, this side's been dealt with, so I'm just going to fast forward through this uh, to get to the other side of the map. And here's what I want to show you about the gun angles. Notice how we can already shoot all of our guns at these obs uh, like just ridiculous angles forward. The back turret, it, it just shoots over half of the ship, it feels like. It's, it's hilarious. And what that allows you to do is you can wiggle your ship just a little bit if you're ever pushing into a destroyer. And it's, they're going to have a tough time hitting you. And you're still going to be able to get all your DPM on the target. Um, unfortunately, I don't know if I'd recommend going up this line anymore. Um, this tier 7 is awesome. I really like this thing. But the tier 8 is kind of not so good. It's a Benson with... I think it only gets four guns. I actually don't remember that correctly instead of the normal five guns of a Benson. And then the uh, tier 9 and 10 have been nerfed uh, since they uh, they have radar access. Um, so Wargaming thought it would be good to nerf them. So they're not the best destroyers anymore just because their DPM is generally uh, around a tier lower than what uh, their ship is. So the tier 10 Yu Yang has around the DPM of tier 9 destroyers, and the uh, Chengmu at tier 9 has around the DPM of some tier 8s. So, not the best line to go up, but this is a pretty solid place to be. Now here, obviously, I can see the Baltimore pushing into me. So I pop the smoke to go dark, and I'm leaving it right away, as you can see. Uh, our smoke hasn't even fully bloomed yet, and I'm just leaving. Because I know that Baltimore wants to radar me. I, I'm very confident of that, that he's just charging my smoke, because he's dark, there's not much stopping him. So, a lot of times in Destroyers, you have to keep an eye out for where the radar cruisers are, and then abandon your smoke screen or your position, if you know that a radar ship is able to just charge you down like this Baltimore is. So that's why I'm running away. You can, you'll notice I'm also running somewhat towards the island that I'm uh, next to here. That's just a nice way to get... Uh, safe from the Baltimore should he catch up to me and radar me. I could just hop behind this island. Um, I'm greedy for damage, so that's why I'm just starting to shoot. Uh, I play my DDs like this a lot, where I just end up shooting at cruisers and different things. But the maneuverability of this ship and the ability to shoot your rear turret at ridiculous angles uh, helps, you, uh, <laughs> helps you live a lot. You see how I was wiggling there back and forth and then just shooting whenever I could? Um, this ship pushing into you is hard to deal with. It doesn't have a ton of HP, which is, you know, good balancing factor. Obviously, if it had, like, 16,000 HP, it would be even better. Um, but it's a really, really strong ship. And, of course, when you're on these low HP numbers like I am right now, and you have Adrenaline Rush, your torpedo reload is actually really, really nice for how powerful these torpedoes are at this tier. It's kind of insane what this, uh, this ship can do. Now, I haven't played the other Tier 7 Destroyers very recently. They could be just amazing as well, and I'm just not remembering correctly. But I seem to remember not liking Tier 7 Destroyers at all, and then this one came along, and I just had a blast with it. And as you can see here, even up-tiered into Tier 8 matchmaking, we still do really, really well. Um, now, we didn't end up facing uh, a really strong Tier 8 Destroyer that uh, just kind of fully counters us with better concealment, better DPM, that kind of thing, more HP. But still a really, really nice game. Had to deal with some radar, um, led the charge for our team on the uh, on the home cap there. And not, we did pretty good there. I, I, I like this ship a lot. I should be playing it more, I think, than I am. I tend to just get stuck at tier 10 these days. Uh, just because I don't like being bottom tier. Um, but tier 10 has gotten so stale, I might start playing these mid tiers a little bit more. That's kind of what inspired this uh, this change. Now here I want to note, I'm still lit even though I'm firing my guns. So we know the enemy DD is close by. 
He's within our gun range. That's why you saw me look around. I, I assumed I was going to be unspotted there once I got behind that island, but I wasn't. Just little things like that helps your situational awareness and improves your destroyer play, and cruiser play for that matter, but pretty awesome game I'd say. 147k in a tier 7 ship uh, in a 12 minute battle, pretty good I'd, I think. I had a lot of fun with this one. So to just talk about my captain real quick, I actually do have an 18 point commander on this thing. Um, that's how much I did like it back in the day. Uh, so I'm using priority target, I'd probably switch that to preventive maintenance these days since I don't really feel like I need priority target anymore. Uh, now that I've gotten used to playing without it, um, but otherwise pretty standard build, last stand. Um, I am taking, I am not taking survivability expert. That would be something you could take. Uh, it just is less valuable at lower tiers because obviously you get more HP for every tier higher you are. So the lower down in the tiers you are, the less valuable this thing is. But if you want to go more of a gun build, that would definitely be an option. Probably take away Demo Expert to get uh, Survivability Expert. That's probably the right decision, actually, now that Demo Expert's been nerfed. This this build, I'm pretty sure, is from before uh, the IFHE rework, so Demo Expert used to be a little bit better. But still a decent build, and this is how I ran it. Concealment Expert, obvious. Uh, BFT to get your DPM a little better, and I actually do run Torpedo Armament Expertise, and it is so good on this thing, just because these torpedoes are awesome, man. You get 108 second reload on 16k alpha torps uh, that have 0.8 detection. Uh, pretty pretty insane. Uh, and they go 8 kilometers and go 64 knots. For tier 7 destroyer, those are pretty nice numbers on torps, especially on a ship that has pretty solid gun power as well, as you saw. To have the combination, usually you have to pick one at this tier. Usually it's either good guns or good torps. This thing kind of just gets good both. <laughs> um, so, pretty pretty nice ship. Um, if you haven't played it for a while, I would definitely recommend trying it. Uh, you can see I'm running prop mod. Uh, I did switch to torpedo tubes mod. You could definitely run uh, aiming systems if you felt like the dispersion's really bad, but I, th I, I feel like the dispersion's good enough, so that's why I'm running torp tubes. Standard engine room protection, as well as standard main armaments mod 1. Yeah, it's a fun little ship. It's fun to mess around in uh, kind of mid-tiers like this. You'll you'll find less uh, try-hard games in mid-tiers, and that means you can have more fun being hyper-aggressive like I was in that game. So, thanks for watching, guys, and I hope you have a great day.